What does the Freemason Lodge, Michelangelo, and Jewish mysticism all have in common? We'll find out in this week's Watchmen video broadcast. Hello folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard coming to you from Watchmen Studios with another Watchmen video broadcast. I want to get right into it. We have a lot of ground to cover this week. Last week I left you hanging in Numbers chapter 9, following the cloud. We know the Lord is going to appear in the clouds. When He comes back, He's going to be in the clouds. Now, I think that God's people ought to be able to recognize the difference between Christ and Antichrist, between the real Holy Spirit and another spirit. I think God's people ought to be able to recognize the difference. So, Numbers chapter 9, it's where we left off last week. We were talking about the visible sign of God amongst the Israelites in the wilderness how would they know whether or not they were leaving on any particular day? And it was because they were following the cloud. They were following God who appeared in the pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. Let's read that scripture because that's going to introduce us to another spirit. And if it's another spirit, it's another Jesus. All right? Numbers chapter 9, verse 15. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony, and that even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed, and in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. And the, at the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, According to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. So, we have the visible presence of God in the tabernacle in the form of the pillar of fire by night, and in the pillar of cloud by day. If it was at night, and they noticed that the pillar of fire had moved away from the tabernacle, then they all got up in the middle of the night. Boy, that would be unusual. It'd be hard to do in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning. Hey, kids, get up. We got to go. So they all packed up, whether it was night or day, they all packed up, grabbed everything. The Levites took care of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant all the furniture there, and they moved, whether it was night or whether it was day. But they followed that unmistakable pillar of cloud or pillar of fire. That was God's presence among them. We've seen numerous places in the Bible where it was called the glory of the Lord in the cloud. The glory of the Lord. And we know that that was like the rainbow that was in the cloud from Genesis 9, Ezekiel chapter 1, 
So it was unmistakable to them. Now, we introduced the term last week called Shekinah. And I told you that in the back of my mind, I knew that I had heard that before or seen it before, but I couldn't quite place what it was. And I had been hearing like, you know, radio broadcasts when I was in Bible college, there was, um, I listened to this Christian radio station, KJSL, um, or KJIL, yeah, that was Oklahoma, KJI, King Jesus is Lord is what it was. And listening to all these daytime preachers that they played, and I kept hearing the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah glory, oh, we're going to have the Shekinah glory. And I'm going, where have I heard that before? And I knew it just, it, something about it didn't sound right. I never, I never heard that in Sunday school, never heard it you know, preached as a boy growing up, uh, but I was hearing it now on Christian radio. And I thought, you know, am I missing something? Should I be having this Shekinah on me or whatever? I just had a lot of questions. Then, over time, I would hear other preachers preach. I'd be in, in meetings or, you know, revival services, or we'd have guest preachers in, and they would talk about the Shekinah glory. And I'm going, there it is again. Where are they getting that from? And there would be people who would say that that cloud and the glory of the Lord in that cloud, well, that, the Jews referred to that as the Shekinah glory. So we need the Shekinah glory on us. We need the Shekinah. So I decided to look into it. What was, what was it they were talking about? Now, take a look at this on the screen. This is from blueletterbible.org. And it gives us a Hebrew word, shakan. And I want you to notice the part of speech, it's a verb. And the root word, the etymology, a primitive root, apparently akin by transmission to Hebrews 7, 7901 through the idea of lodging. So, and it says, and here's the breakdown of Exodus 24, 16, and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. So let me stop right here. The glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. Now, those who say Shekinah are always saying, see, that's the Shekinah glory. The glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. It was the Shekinah glory on Mount Sinai. We need that Shekinah glory. And, and I'm just, I'm looking at this and I'm going, Shekinah is a verb. Shekinah is the word abode in that verse, Exodus 24, 16, However, Shekinah is a noun, and it's a feminine noun. So, the Shekinah cannot, be, a, a verb is not a noun, and a noun is not a verb. The verb Shekinah is, and I'm assuming in Hebrew the verb tense follows the, the noun. To, if the noun is masculine, then the verb, I'm, I'm guessing, would be masculine. So how is it that Shekinah, a feminine noun, replaced Shekan, a masculine verb? And let me reiterate this. You'll never find in the King James translation the word Shekinah. You'll never find it in there. You'll never find in any other Bible translation Shekinah. You'll never find in the Greek Septuagint. The Septuagint was the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. You'll never find in the Septuagint Shekinah. And you'll never find in the Hebrew Old Testament the word Shekinah. You'll never find it. So, my thing is, if it's not in any Bible anywhere, why are we using it as a term? Why do I hear people say, Shekinah glory, oh, that's the Shekinah glory. Why, do, why, why are we doing that? Why are preachers... And, I, and I'm saying good preachers because I've known a lot of good men in my life 
but they've all said Shekinah glory. Why are they doing that? Now, sometimes people do things out of ignorance. <laughs> A lot of things I do, sometimes it's out of ignorance. So I get that. But I think somebody needs to set the record straight because I think we're approaching the day when all of God's people ought to be able to tell the difference between the real Jesus and the anti-Jesus and the real Holy Spirit and Shekinah because Shekinah is not the real Holy Spirit. Let me show you this. I did some digging. I started, you go to Google Books. Google uh, took all these old books from these university libraries and they scanned them and some of these are you can download them for free they're these old reference books dictionaries commentaries from the 1800s some in the 1700s this is from a uh, dictionary of the bible james hastings scrivener's sons his publisher 1902 here's what they said the idea of shekinah first shows up in the jewish targums stop right here jewish targums you know what that is that's the traditions that the Jews added to the law of God. It wasn't the law of God. The Jewish Targums are not the law of God. They are the law, they're the commentary of the law of God or the commentary on the commentary of the law of God. And Jesus said, you've made vain the word of God by your traditions. You've voided it out. The Jews, after they got the law of God, they went and they received instruction from all of these other gods. And God said, no, you can't do that. I don't want you doing that, but that's what they did. God warned them about it. He knew what was going to happen, and that's exactly what they did. So that's what the Jewish Targums are. Paraphrases of the Old Testament. Since the Jews saw God as having nothing to do with his creation, that he would not or could not touch his creation, there was provided for him a mediatrix. See that? The feminine force they called Shekinah. Any place in the Bible where the scriptures reference God as actually being in a place, they substituted the Shekinah there for God is everywhere, not just in one place. That's what they were saying. So the Shekinah is used in the Targums as the equivalent for the divine being, not for his glory. A good illustration of this occurs in Isaiah 60, where the Hebrew reads, The Lord shall, out, shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Targum renders, In thee the Shekinah of the Lord shall dwell, and his glory shall be revealed upon thee. Isaiah 33, He dwelleth on high becomes, He has placed his Shekinah in the lofty heaven. Now get this. The word of God is the word of God. And God said, you should not add to the word of God nor diminish aught from it. That's what he said in Deuteronomy. He says in Revelation 22, if any man shall add unto these words, I'll add to him the plagues. If any man shall take away from these words, I'll take away his name out of the book of life. So tell the Jews, don't do something. What do they do? They do it. Tell the Jews to do something. The Jews go, I'm not doing that, but I'm going to do something close to it. And in that, I think I'm pleasing God. But they don't. So here is the plain reading of the Old Testament. He dwelleth on high. He dwelleth on high. God dwelleth on high. But they say God can't dwell on high because God is everywhere. How can he dwell in one place like on high? So they just took it out. And they put something else in its place. They put in the place of God a female Shekinah. That's what, and that's where it came from. And they got the idea of this feminine presence of God from all these other religions that God told them not to learn from that had a female goddess. And if you notice, in the, you read through the Old Testament, you'll never see anywhere where God becomes a woman. You don't find it there. You don't see it in the New Testament either. And this is what Paul was warning us about, another spirit. Okay? So, I mean, it's, how easy is that, right? You see a man, you go, that's a man. You see a woman, you go, that's a woman. Now, sometimes me and my wife, you know, we're out every Friday together and we'll see somebody and we'll go, is that a man or a woman? 
she'll go, I think it was a woman. And I'm going, no, I think that was a man. Or, the, you know, vice versa. Let me show you where I remembered where Shekinah came from. Remember I told you, you know, I heard the word Shekinah. And I'm going, I've seen that somewhere before. Where have, I, where have I seen that before? Well, and I got back from Bible college, established a family, got back in town here in the city of Festus, driving down the street one day, and I went, Arr! I looked right at it. And I went, there it is. Sometimes if people come in to visit, I'll take them by this place. Because the Freemasonic Lodge here in the city of Festus, Crystal City, is the Shekinah Lodge. Take a look at it. Not only is it the Shekinah Lodge, do you see there? This is from... I mean, the picture up top is the board, the sign board out in front of the Masonic Lodge, Festus Crystal City, Shekinah Lodge. See the square and the compass. But from their Facebook page, Shekinah, you can look this up on Facebook, Shekinah Lodge number 256, that's the Crystal City, Festus, Missouri, Masonic Lodge. Notice that all-seeing eye is the eye of... I'll say it's this one. It's the eye of Ra. The eye of the sun. It's an Egyptian pagan god. The one that's on top of the, the capstone, on top of the, all, the, uh, the pyramid of the Great Seal of the United States of America. Okay? Then I, I went, that's where I, get, that's where I remembered it from. I knew I'd see it somewhere. And sure enough, the Masonic Lodge in Festus, Crystal City, Missouri, is called the Shekinah Lodge. So I went into my go-to book, Secret Teachings of All Ages. It's a digest of all the religions, all the secret societies all over the world from time memorial. That's what Manley Hall did. He pulled in all these ideas from all these different religions and digested it down into this really thick book called Secret Teachings of All Ages. This is what Hall said. This cloud was called by the Jews the Shekinah and was symbolic of the presence of the Lord. In one of the early Jewish books, rejected at the time of the compiling of the Talmud, the following description of the Shekinah appears. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and that was one of the clouds of glory, which served the Israelites in the wilderness 40 years. One on the right hand, and one on the left, and one before them, and one behind them, and one over them, and a cloud dwelling in their midst, and the cloud, the Shekinah, which was in the tent, and the pillar of cloud, which moved before them, making low before them the high places, and making high before them the low places, and killing serpents and scorpions, and burning thorns and briars, and guiding them in the straight way. This is from the Baretha, the book of the tabernacle. So Manley Hall got it right. He said, the Jews, this was rejected in the early formation of, what did he say, the, the Talmud? This was early on rejected, but then later it crept its way in. That, And it, I don't know where in the world they get the idea that there was one in the front, one in the back, one on the right, one on the left, one above them, one going, you know, got killing snakes before. I don't know where they got that one from. Oh, the glory of the Lord. Well, he's there, but he's there, but he's there. And there's one back here and there's one up. That's not what the Bible says. But anyway, you see what happened. The Jews infected by the religious ideologies of Canaan land and the, Ash, uh, the Hittites, the Avarites, and the whateverites, and the Canaanites, and then the Babylonians, and the Assyrians, and the Sumerians, and everybody infected Jewish thought with these other religious ideas. So they substituted a mediatrix. They substituted the presence of God with a, wo a woman. Now, they're not the only ones that have done that. And you see why now I get the willies when I hear in a, in a preaching service of some kind 
either a preacher or somebody in the congregation say, that's the Shekinah glory. We need the Shekinah. Oh, let the Shekinah come down. I'm just going, no, no. But I think, I'm pretty sure that in a lot of churches already an infestation has come in. An infestation called Shekinah. So Paul says it in 2 Corinthians 11, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. I always thought it was neat that the letter B was in the word subtle. Because, you know, the letter B in there is subtle. You don't hear it, but it's in there. I just thought that was funny. Anyway, beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, there it is. If you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And that's exactly, people, that is exactly what's happened. This never, this never came from the Bible. Nobody ever read the Bible ever and said, oh, Shekinah glory. They never read it there. Where did they get it from? Somebody, somebody, either a Freemason or maybe multiple, multiple ways. Maybe some members of a Freemasonic lodge somewhere else. I'm sure there's more than one Shekinah lodge brought that in to their church or their religious movement. Maybe some others. I want to know the way the Hebrews understood it. So they started reading the Mishnah and, and all of the Targums, and they started reading all of these unbiblical books, the ones that Jesus said, that's your tradition, and you're ruining the Bible with it. They started reading this stuff. Oh, that's how the Jews understood it. Oh, wow, the Jews got it. No, the Jews were wrong in everything. They were wrong about it. They were wrong about who God was. They were wrong about who the Messiah was going to be. They were wrong about the Spirit of God. They got it wrong all across the board. And yet you still have people who are going, oh, the Hebrews, they understood it this way. That must be the real way. And then so they're bringing Shekinah in. Take a look at this. I mean, all you got to do is do a search on the Internet of Shekinah ministry or Shekinah church, Shekinah whatever. This stuff you'll find. Shekinah glory ministry, refreshed by fire. Shekinah Glory International Ministries, helping people find their way back to God. Pastor Tamika Rogers. That would be a woman. You see? When you replace the Holy Spirit with a female spirit, then you can replace the pastor with a female pastor against scriptures. And it doesn't matter because they will say, oh, she's full of the spirit. She flows with the spirit. Yeah, but what spirit? It's, it's not the Holy Spirit. No, it's not. It's not the Holy Spirit. If it's a female, it's not the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying God cannot use women. God used women greatly, but not as a pastor, not as a bishop, not as to usurp authority in the house of God. So when they replace the spirit, God's Holy Spirit, with Shekinah, the female spirit, then they'll replace the pastor with a female pastor. Here's the words to a song. Release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come, Shekinah glory come. Here's another one. Shekinah glory ministries. Shekinah, here's another one. Shekinah glory ministries. Shekinah glory international ministries. Shekinah glory. These are all different ones. Shekinah glory everything. Here's a book called the Shekinah glory. The Shekinah, a study in the glory of Christ. This is a book you can get from, or a CD, by the way. Six CDs, 14 bucks. You see, Shekinah, because of who she is, doesn't give her stuff away for free. She's always going to sell it. You get what I mean? 
the cloud of God's glory that settled over the wilderness tabernacle and later over the temple in Jerusalem during Israel's early history has been called the Shekinah glory. What does Shekinah mean? And how did the triune God represent himself in that cloud? The answer may surprise us. I want you to get this. They're saying that this cloud was a woman and that the Shekinah or that God, the triune God, represented himself in that woman, that female spirit, which did you guess who it is by now? She goes by many names. Asherah, Ashtaroth, Ishtar, Isis, Shingmu, Queen Latifah, Diana, Jezebel, Mystery, Babylon, the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's, that's who Shekinah really is. She She's replaced the Holy Spirit. And all you got to do is listen to know that she's there. Because when people are asking for the Shekinah glory, I'm reasonably sure that she loves to walk in, take over. Here's another one, the Shekinah glory of God. We cannot have glory without the person of God. It is the presence of God that makes heaven glorious. His essence makes up his weight, Shekinah, means the resting of Yahweh. No, it doesn't. No, it, no, it doesn't. Remember, Shekinah is a masculine verb. Shekinah is female noun. The two do not match. They do not, they're not equal each other. It's a setup, people. Here's another one, the Shekinah glory. Throughout the pages of the Bible, one can find stories of a strange light, an unexplainable source of energy. At the east gate of Eden, it was called a flaming sword. On the top of Mount Sinai, it was a burning bush that was not consumed. I want you to look up at the top. Who wrote that? J.R. Church. How did, how did he get deceived? into believing that God's presence was a female harlot. A book, The Shekinah Glory of Christ at His Second Coming. See, I said, if it's another spirit, it will not bring in the right Jesus. It will bring in another Jesus. And hence, when you have another spirit, and you have another Jesus, you will have another gospel, people. Now, you may have, you may be angry at me. This, this may be some of your favorite people. You may follow them. You may have sent them money. Uh, you may listen to me on the side, but you follow these others, and you're mad at me because you think I'm wrong or because I named somebody that you like. I can't help it. If it's not the Bible, then we shouldn't follow it. Jesus himself said, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. If it's not written in the volume, and he didn't mean the Jewish Targums, he didn't mean the Mishnah, he didn't mean all these Jewish traditions or these Greek Gnostic ideas. By the way, she goes by the name of, she's Shekinah in the Old Testament and among the Hebrews, she's Sophia among the Greeks. Either way you look at it, it's a female harlot spirit. And if people push this and people believed in it, that's not my fault. And I'm sorry, because like I said, I've known good men who mistakenly used this they were deceived. So, uh, just because Prophet Diallo Godfield, take a look at this, just because he says that, the that for 40 days the Shekinah glory aura enveloped Prophet Diallo on stage in South Africa. Are you kidding me? Now there's the real presence of God and there's 
Photoshop, right? Because even if it's Photoshop, and you say, well, that's not a real spirit, that's Photoshop. But see, that's my point. God, his real spirit, will never lie to you. He doesn't have to. He has all the glory and all the power, and there's, there's power and glory in his written word. God doesn't have to lie to you to get you excited. God just tells you the truth, and you can get excited about that. But here, these people, they have a different spirit in them, a Shekinah spirit. The Shekinah spirit will have you lie, right? Because when everybody says, oh, I feel the Shekinah coming on me, see, they're lying. They're lying about that that's God's spirit. It's not. So a spirit of truth or a spirit of lies, which one do you want? And the spirit of lies will Photoshop stuff in a picture and say, that's the Shekinah glory uh, for 40 days that enveloped Prophet Diallo, Godfield in South Africa. Woo! He's a man of God. Look at the aura around him. That's the Shekinah. And see, I believe it. I believe it's a real spirit, and I believe she loves to Photoshop stuff in. Here's another one. For those of you in Kenya, you've heard of Dr. The, excuse me, the prophet, Dr. Owar, right? I didn't know it one time. I was on the same plane with him coming uh, into Kenya, and uh, I got off the plane in Kenya and got my baggage, and I noticed all of these people standing there with their phones out, taking you know videos of, of me getting my luggage, and, and I'm going, are all these people here to meet me? And I kept looking at their faces, and they were, were going, they were looking around me, like, get out of the way. And when I found my son-in-law, I said, what are all these people here? And he said, you didn't know. I said, no, what? Dr. Awar was on that plane, only he was riding, you know, business coach, business class, you know, the, the, the top level seats up there, getting, you know, wine and stuff like that all the time. They weren't there for me. They were there for him. Th uh, the hundreds of people, I'll say, hundreds of people there at the airport waiting for the big prophet to get off the plane. See, he's big noise in Kenya. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a fornicator. He takes young girls off into a little private retreat that he calls his prayer retreat. Yeah, he's praying all right. He's praying on them. And he goes around claiming to uh, heal sick people and raise people from the dead. And everybody sends all of their hard-earned Kenya shillings right to him. See, he's very wealthy. And he can afford that business class ticket back from the States. Oh, here's false prophet Dr. Awar. This is from his website. Claims Shekinah Cloud came to his meeting in Kisumu, in uh, December 21st, 2012. Look at that. Look at that. That's the Shekinah glory cloud. You see it? Photoshop. Photoshop. Um, the video of this on YouTube, the cloud of God that went before the children of Israel out of Egypt came down. Doctor, listen to this. This is what really makes me mad. Dr. Owar is the prophet spoken of in the Bible from the Lord to the prophets, Moses, Malachi, and also by Luke the evangelist, whom all said that would come in the last days to prepare the way of the Lord and return the hearts of the people back to the Lord God. See, that really, that really makes me angry. That this man claims, this man claims, this money-hungry, thieving, lying, fornicating man claims that he's the prophet, capital P. Let me show you where that comes from. I'm going to read this to you. This just, it's Deuteronomy 18. If you look in your King James Bible, God promised, verse 18, Deuteronomy 18, 18, I will raise them up a prophet, and it's capital P in the King James, from among their brethren like unto thee. Dr. War is not Jewish. Uh, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Listen, now, this is why he's claiming to be that prophet. Get ready for this one. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. 
See, it's a threat. It's a threat to the people of Kenya that if you don't listen to Dr. War, God's going to come and get you. He's going to kill you. He's going to be angry at you because you didn't listen to Dr. War and you didn't send your daughters to the prayer retreat. You didn't send him your money. Makes me sick. Oh, I believe he's got the Shekinah glory and I believe that's Photoshop and it's a bad one at that. Very blurry picture. Okay? You get what I'm saying. I don't like this spirit at all. It is a setup. It's a, it's a false spirit. It's a lying, familiar spirit pretending to be the spirit of God and the presence of God, but it's not. It's Shekinah. It's the harlot spirit. And Dr. O'War is full of it. I first learned about this from the Da Vinci Code years ago. Early Jews believed that the Holy of Holies in Solomon's temple housed not only God, but also his powerful female equal, Shekinah. His equal? There is no equal to God. Men seeking spiritual wholeness came to the temple to visit priestesses or hierodules with whom they made love and experienced the divine through physical union. That's that talk where people are talking about being intimate with God. Oh, we need intimacy with God. That's eyes full of adultery, people. From the Da Vinci Code, you remember the idea was that Leonardo da Vinci encoded certain themes into his paintings, and while all the claims of the Da Vinci Code, some of them are just way out there, this one, I believe, that, that Leonardo da Vinci, when he painted his Last Supper, is supposed to be Jesus and the twelve disciples, right? And you can tell which one's Judas, because he's the thief holding the bag. And we have Jesus dressed in a, a red shirt with a blue cloak on, and it's supposed to be John, the Apostle John, sitting next to him, with a blue shirt and a red cloak. I'm going to take a look at it. They're opposites. See how they're leaning away from each other? See how the V shape between them? Um, and this red-headed female sitting next to Jesus is Shekinah. It's supposed to be uh, like Mary Magdalene who they say was the red-headed harlot girlfriend of Jesus, that he got pregnant. Not only did da Vinci give Jesus a girlfriend in the form of Mary Magdalene, his buddy Michelangelo hired to paint the Sistine Chapel in the ceiling where you see God supposedly giving life to Adam by touching his finger, that's not how it happened in the Bible. Michelangelo, we know something's not right there because that's not how God gave life to Adam. So when you look at this painting, you see that God's left arm is around a bare-breasted, red-headed woman who is Shekinah, God's equal. There is nobody equal to my God. No woman equal to my God. Here is um, Sophie Nevu, who is the female hero of the Da Vinci Code from the movie. She is supposed to be Mary Magdalene. She's supposed to be of the lineage. She's supposed to be of the bloodline of Jesus Christ. She is a direct descendant Christ and there is the guardians of the grail in this movie the the grail keepers who are guarding her and protecting her so that the bloodline of Jesus would remain on this earth because out of the bloodline of Jesus is supposed to be a future king An, another Jesus who is coming out of the Shekinah so here is an artist's depiction of Shekinah. Notice she's holding a chalice. So who is that according to the Bible? That's 
Revelation 17, she has in her hand a golden cup, and it's full of the wine of the fornications of men. And she's made all the world drunk with that wine. That dove above her, that's not, see, that's not really the Holy Spirit. That dove indicates to you that it's pretending to be the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. It's Shekinah, the red flowing, and by the, by the way, the fingers. The hands always make the gesture. I'm compiling a list, images from motion pictures where they keep, they keep using this sign. They keep doing it. Okay, I'll present that. I'm collecting them now. Every time I see it, I, it's like I zero in on it. I can spot. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. That is as above, so below, all joined into the same body. Okay, and we know who that represents. In fact, if you type in artist depictions of Mary Magdalene, you're going to overwhelmingly find different artists at different times painting the Scarlet Woman, usually with a chalice, the one in the middle. She's actually knelt at the feet of Jesus. Notice the skull at her feet, all with long flowing red hair, usually dressed in scarlet of some kind, holding a cup. Here's more, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, here's his Mary Magdalene, notice the long flowing red hair, the one in the middle, she's clothed with uh, serpents entwined about her. Notice this image on the left, this is a stained glass window in a church in Scotland. Jesus holding Mary Magdalene's hand. Notice she has red hair and notice her belly. You can tell by the belt that she's got, the girdle she's got, she's pregnant. And thus we have the image from Roman Polanski's, Roman Polanski was a pervert. Roman Polanski's movie, Rose Mary's baby, red hair, red dress. She was impregnated by the devil himself and she's carrying the devil's child. And if you, if you study films, imagery is everything. Rosemary's baby takes place at Christmas time. What does that tell you? about the birth of a savior into the world. Uh, I find it everywhere. Here's uh, Scully from the X-Files. In the X-Files, Mulder represents the Christ figure because he's on his search for the Holy Grail, which was alien, get this, alien and human DNA mingled together. That was the Holy Grail that they were in search of. She'll notice her red hair. Uh, Lilu from the fifth element, she has a unique property in her DNA. She has alien DNA, and she speaks the divine language, the secret magic alien language. Dr. Banks from the movie Arrival, she learns the circle language of the aliens that helps her foresee the future. She's like the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah. Murphy Cooper from the movie Interstellar. She decodes the binary instructions her father is giving her from the fifth dimension that will save mankind. And then we have the new Lois Lane, the consort of a god from the planet Krypton. Do you know, what, do you know where they got the planet Krypton from? Krypton means a secret, a mystery. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were the two Jewish men that invented the Ubermensch, the Superman. And he's from a planet called Krypton. And his father's name is El, Jor El. He is Kal El of the house of El, which is God's name. He's the son of a God who falls down to the earth to be the savior. And he's the bridge between the two worlds, the heavenly world and the human world. And his girlfriend, Lois Lane, now she has red hair. She used to have black hair in the comic books. Now she has, she has red hair. 
She is the Shekinah. 